Um, thanks everybody for making the trek all the way out here in the snow. Um, and to those of you online, thank you to North Branch Nature Center for very generously hosting us here tonight. Um, we were excited to have such a lovely location to host an in-person meeting. Bummer that there are only a handful of us here. Um, but really grateful for their, their support in this. Um, we will get into the meat of the meeting shortly. First, I want to start with commissioner introductions. My name is Kasha Ranjo, and I am chair of the Parks Commission. My name is Stephanie Hunt. I'm a Parks Commissioner. Andrew Brewer, Park Commissioner. Lincoln Frasca, Parks <clears throat> Commissioner. Emily, could you go ahead and take yourself off mute and introduce yourself online? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a Parks Commissioner. Thank you. Um, Alec. I'm Alec Ellsworth, the Parks Director, Parks and Trees Director. All right, so that's um, all of us. Um, for those of you in the chat um, or online, I've tried to capture your names um, so far based on the chat, I, or the um, your names showing up on the screen. Um, it would be great if everybody could drop your name also into the chat, um, especially if there are a couple people joining or the name on your screen isn't your actual person. Um, we try to capture that for the notes. And those of you here in person, there's a sign-in sheet um, make sure to sign that so we can capture you for the minutes. Um, before we get started, um, let's uh, jump into our usual order of business, which is our January 16th agenda and December 19th minutes. Um, can I get a motion? I move both the agenda and the minutes. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, Emily. Um, all right, passes unanimously. Um, and then any public comment on topics that are not on tonight's agenda. So tonight, I think, as everybody knows, we're going to be talking about the trail segment from Seven Fireplaces to North Park Drive. Um, if, the, if you're here for any other topic or purpose, now's your chance. All right, let's move on to the presentation and discussion. Um, I think I'm going to take a back seat here, Alec, and um, is gonna present and share some background information on what we're talking about here tonight, and then Lincoln is going to facilitate the discussion portion um, and questions, and we'll go from there. Alec. I'll, I'll kick it off, just a few opening remarks before Alec gets going on his presentation. But first, just want to say thanks for everybody who showed up in person, online, and for all the comments we received leading up to this meeting. Uh, also, thanks to Alec and the Parks Department, Matt Wilson at the Senior Center for getting the word out for this meeting and um, making sure people knew what was going on so you could help us in this planning process. And just want to ground everybody into the, the theme and the main topic for tonight, which is this idea and question about a possible multi-use trail from seven fireplaces in Hubbard Park to North, Brand North Park Drive onto the Elm Street Rec Facilities and North Branch Park. And multi-use is biking, walking, or skiing. So uh, the idea for this trail came out of a survey that we put out when we were doing the Hubbard and North Branch management plan planning process. We put a survey out, and uh, what, what we heard in that survey was that there was a lot of support for bicycle connectivity through the parks and to the parks. And an idea that came from this was it, the, the option of exploring a trail that would connect seven fireplaces to North Park Drive. So, we want to hear, you know, we're here tonight because of that feedback from that survey, and we want to hear all sides of the issue. We want to hear what people are excited about and possible opportunities, and we also want to hear some reservations people might have or concerns or obstacles they might see in developing a trail like this. And I, I do want to emphasize we're not making any decisions tonight. This is a process meeting. We, we appreciate and we need all of your input so that the commission can go and make an informed decision. And if, if there is a lot of support and we decide to move to the planning process for this, there's still a lot of work to be done. There'd be more conversations and work with adjacent landowners. We would be going into a design phase. Alec will talk about that. There'd be other opportunity for public engagement. So tonight's just a discussion. 
And before we get into that back and forth and opening it up to everybody online and in the room, Alex is going to give us a presentation about what the trail might actually look like on the ground and some finer details. And then we'll, we'll get the discussion going and try to wrap things up around 7.30 tonight so everybody can cozy up and uh, shovel themselves out for tomorrow morning. Great. Thanks, Lincoln. Can people hear me? Yep, I, I can hear you. Yeah, great. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Share. And are people seeing? Oh, Sky. Sky Let's see here. People are seeing what's up here? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes, it's all working. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for coming. Thanks to Lincoln for kicking us off. Um, I'll just jump right into the presentation. It's going to be pretty short, uh, certainly no more than 10 minutes, and I'll try to address sort of what's on the table and um, answer some FAQs at the end and uh, launch us into a discussion. So um, here's a map. If you look on the right, you'll see uh, an arrow um, in between seven fireplaces, which is the lower arrow. It's that little sort of lollipop looking bit. Um, and the North Park Drive Trailhead, which is the upper arrow. Um, and I'm going to walk up to the screen here, if that's OK. So the map's a little bit small, but um, the red trails are walking only trails. And the yellow and red trails are the currently allowed multi-use trails in Hubbard Park. Um, and they're basically the, the walking, the large, the very wide walking roads. So this is the steep road up to the tower. This is the the uh, uh, less steep way down, this is the new shelter here, seven fireplaces, and then the multi-use access ends right at this little circle here. And so you'll notice basically between this point and this point, there's no, uh, it's, it's walking only and skiing um, are the two permitted uses and, and winter, <coughs> winter biking use. Um, and so the project goals you'll see on the left um, is to basically, in, sh in short, close that gap. <coughs> on the right, you'll see, you know, that's where the pool is, the, the rec fields, the North, the North Ranch Park. Um, so we're currently lacking that connectivity between uh, our two largest parks for, um, you know, for multi-use trails, specifically for mountain bikes. Um, and then there's also... Uh, you know, additional goals that you'll see on the bottom as far as connecting into neighborhoods. There's a separate trail project which we won't discuss tonight, but about connecting over to the North Park or to the Park West neighborhood um, through, through the new parcels that we acquired a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, this is just a sort of a list of the of the all the important points taking into consideration as part of this project. Uh, this is the specific language from the management plan. Um, it's on, uh, I believe, page 40 of the management plan on the large action table. And um, it's uh, couched within a larger strategy of uh, you know, access to the parks and connectivity. So um, looking you know, specifically at action C is, is really the reason that we're here, exploring the possibility of building a connecting trail for easy travel between the Elm Street Recreation Fields, North Park Drive, and seven fireplaces that would be open to bikes, pedestrians, and cross-country skiers. Um, and I, that bottom bit about the design, I will go through here. Um, so this is a page from uh, the Vermont Trail Design Guidelines. Um, it's a great document that clearly outlines different types of trails cross-country trails, walking trails, universally accessible trails, mountain bike, easy, medium, hard, uphill only. And um, if, you, if you go to the bottom, you can see sort of the, the general characteristics of what you might expect um, on this type of trail. So um, for, you know, just to make sure we're all on the same page about what the language means, tread width is the actual area that you would walk on um, or bike on or ski on. The corridor width is, if you stretch your hands out like this, you could walk through that corridor without hitting any obstacles. Um, so usually that's, you know, side branches off of trees and that type of thing. Um, not necessarily, you know, you wouldn't necessarily remove a large tree to achieve a, an eight-foot corridor, but you would, you know, prune the vegetation such that 
you could make it through. Um, and the corridor height is the same thing, you know, just as if, like you could imagine, you would want a much higher corridor on a horse trail than you might need for a walking trail. Um, the slope is, uh, usually we measure slope in, in percent. Um, so zero to 10% um, is a, is a multi-use trail. If anyone is familiar with the Parks Connector Trail that it exists currently, I'm just gonna scroll back to. So between those two points, it's a 0 0.41 miles and the average slope is 10%. Um, so I think of that as, as pretty steep as one of the steeper trails in our park system, 10%. Um, is um, you know fairly fairly steep I think especially for um, skiing and then the cross slope is um, the the way the trail goes this way uh, to the side so that water rolls off um, you'll see a ski trail is a little bit different um, depending on what type of skiing you want if it's a more backcountry type of thing the tread could be three feet if you want to have a skate track you might want twelve feet um, and you know generally you want depends on the difficulty of the level, but generally you want uh, uh, lower grades for a ski trail. Um, so if you see the, if, if I go back to the description that's in the plan here, um, we're kind of taking a hybrid of a few of these different types of trail and looking for something that can satisfy all of those constraints. So um, multi-use specifications, so that's the first slide, slide that I, I showed for walking, easy mountain biking, cross-country skiing. And you give some examples, like a 36-inch minimum trail tread, um, which is meant by width, 0 to 5% average grade, and a firm surface, generally free of obstacles. Um, so this is a slide showing kind of where we are in this process. Um, we are at the, above the orange line currently. So um, we try to do things in a, in a three-step process, any big project like this. Um, the first step would be to make a plan to establish public interest um, and um, you know identify what you want this trail to look like, who would be the intended users, um, sort of put fences around the project and make sure there's support for it. Because uh, you know in a municipal project you really try not to spend money on it or much money um, before you you know you're sure the community wants this. So that's where we're at right now, public input. Um, the community has expressed some input, it made it into a management plan, and now we're engaging in this formal process of, uh, of determining public interest. So um, this could be a stopping point. You know, let's say there was no interest in this, this could be the end of this conversation, um, and we would not proceed below that orange line. If there is interest, um, the next step in the plan phase would be to actually design this trail confirm you know all the sort of technical details about the trail hire somebody to design lay out and flag the trail and then we'd be moving into the prepare phase um, uh, oh I yeah the trail design I made a mistake there in my edits four minutes before the meeting here <laughs> but the trail design would be in plan prepare would be like reviewing the design another round of public engagement getting permitting in place preparing a construction plan and then step three is implement um, Usually, um, you know, usually two can be can be the, the the most challenging part. You know, as far as in, in two, you really want to be make sure, making sure you have enough money um, to do it, and and the permitting all comes through. And then by the time you move to step three, that's when things you know really really start moving along, and the trail comes into existence. Um, Wanted to just address some FAQs, especially based on the, you know, the comments that have come in the last week or so on Front Porch Forum about the cost of the trail. Um, so this is just a, there's nothing official. This is just a, my own, you know, what I put together as a rough ballpark cost. Um, so if, if the question is, what is the estimated cost of the trail? If you look at the current trail, it's 0 0.41 miles, 10% grade. We're trying to achieve 0 to 5% grade, so let's just say we double the length of the trail. Um, I don't know if everyone's following me on that, but yeah, basically, if you make the trail twice as long, it would be half as steep. Um, so if we made the trail 0 0.82 miles, um, a good estimate for like a really professional trail builder is $6 per foot of trail, and that would be like a machine-built trail. I'm not saying that's what we want. I'm just using it as a reference built reference number. It'd be six dollars a foot, so that would be twenty-six thousand um, dollars, and then a few few thousand dollars to design it. Um, 
how we pay for it, we have a grant from the, the Vote Rec program um, that this project would be eligible for. So this, this could be entirely grant funded uh, if we wanted to move forward with it. And there would be nothing standing in the way to really using that money. Um, and then who would build it? Uh, it could be done by a professional contractor. We could bid out the job, uh, much like happened um, with the North Branch Trail initiatives um, or initiative um, a few years ago. We could do a sort of a, a parks crew in-house um, hand-built trail or, or machine and hand-built trail uh, with our Youth Conservation Corps. That, that you know that may or may not be a viable option given the way the budget process is rolling out this year. Um, or the way that we've usually done projects is uh, some kind of hybrid uh, of the trail that we did. The universally accessible trail is a great example where we, we uh, partnered with a contractor, but um, our crew did a lot of work and we, we drastically lowered the cost of that trail through um, doing some of the parts that would be normally more expensive. Um, and uh, yeah, if there are, those are just some of the questions that came up and if there are others, I'm happy to answer them this evening. That's the end. All right, thank you, Alec, for that presentation, putting that together for us. So we've got about half dozen people here in person and maybe two dozen plus online. We're going to try to keep things flowing in a natural discussion form. Uh, so we will be monitoring the chat for the folks online. Uh, we, not everybody here will be able to see you, but we will be able to hear you. Um, if you come off mute, you can also use the raise hand function. And uh, uh, the other commissioners can help me out with letting know if, if people are trying to speak up online. But for those who weathered the storm and got a cookie here in person, I would like to uh, give you all first dibs if you would like to make a comment, ask a question, or just kick off the discussion. And feel free to give as much information on your yourself and your own interests or background or where you live as you feel comfortable doing so. But uh, we are officially open for discussion on the topic of this multi-use trail. All right. All right. Um, my name is Tim Flynn. Uh, I live close to the Capitol in that neighborhood below the Capitol there. Um, have a few grandchildren that are, I've been an avid mountain biker for, I don't know, maybe 30 years or maybe even longer than that. Um, and um, I mean, I really appreciate it. We have a gem of a mountain biking multi-use system in North Branch Park. And so it's been wonderful to have that as a resource for Montpelier and for anybody who's visiting. And, um, I'm sorry, could you just speak up a little bit? People yeah. online can't hear you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so uh, I am totally in support of trying to figure out how we make it as safe as possible for um, you know, all the kids that are needing that connectivity to get over and really enjoy the North Branch Trails. Generally, I'm riding down Elm Street right now to get over there. In the, sun, in the winter, I have taken the Disconnector Trail, and it's a very nice way um, to get over there from where I live. But generally, it's, you know, going down Elm Street. And so, you know, it's just, uh, it would, I feel, be a huge advantage for Montpelier if we could have some kind of connector through the park and then have, um, I, you mentioned three neighborhoods, Alec, uh, and I'm not going to be able to um, name those, the West Park, uh, there's three different kind of neighborhoods. <clears throat> And I guess I'm just, um, you know, I think, you know, in the long term, long term, we should think about um, making access to North Branch and making access to Hubbard Park as available as possible. So, if at some point there's a possibility of opening some, opening something up, you know, kind of from the downtown area or from around the Capitol to get up there, and then we have the East Park and we have the West Park, and we just have this nice you know, um, kind of spider web that people can go up in and then go across and then get over there and uh, not having them to ride, um, you know, on the road. Um, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing for the adults to ride on the road to get over there, 
I don't think it's a great thing for a five-year-old or a six-year-old to take their bike, um, you know, on Elm Street, and particularly unsupervised and get over there. So I'm really in support of having some safer ways to really get over to the North Branch Park and, and access that. So I appreciate you all looking at this and trying to figure out how we maybe would, are able to put something safer together to get everybody over to use those beautiful trails we have over there. Thank you very much. As well, well said, <coughs> as we're getting started. Let's take it. Anybody else in the room want to talk? Okay, yeah, please. Brad Watson uh, lived here for 25 plus years, one of the original founders of Mamba. Um, not on the board, other than just helping with trails these days, but um, just want to say that we, I've noticed um, since uh, in my 25 years here of trail advocacy and that uh, there's a lot more users in general uh, in, the, in the city. Um, the parks does such a great job of offering all of these uh, multi-use trails. Um, we've tried to be mindful of I've been to many, many meetings about getting more access to Hubbard Park for bicycles, and really the the, the you know consideration was always you know we we don't want to have user um, you know uh, confrontations, and that could include dogs. So it's been really nice to watch the North Branch Park take life over the last four or five years. There's been lots and lots of meetings. There's been lots and lots of work. I know our mountain bike working closely with the parks and Alec. Alex has really, I think, done a really great job of maintaining, and we have a proven track record of maintaining the trails and trying to make them as safe for any user. Um, it's a shame that the west part of town, the Terrace Streets, the Hubbard Streets, can't access North Branch Park without having to ride on a lot of pavement. Um, and so the connectivity thing is huge in my mind. If you look at the existing trail, we keep saying new trail. Well, most of that trail is already built. It's poorly constructed, it's poorly drained, it's grayed, is poor. As Alex said, it's 10%, we want it at 5%. And if you've ever ridden the fat bike in the winter time up into seven, to, to, from North Park Drive to seven fireplaces, that you have to be fit. So that's not gonna appeal to most bikers, most skiers for that matter, going up hill. So why not invest a little money into an already existing trail, reroute some of the sections, take care of some of the drainage issues, make it user-friendly, multi-use times four seasons, not just winter. Um, it seems like a no-brainer, particularly if we have the funds. So um, I hope the, the commission and I hope the community embraces that. I know it took on its whole other life in Front Porch Forum, um, and I think that was just uh, a little bit lack of information and just the way the, the mood of the community is right now. It's tough, tough right now living in Montpelier. We all know that. But this would bring happiness to a lot of people, so I'm all for it. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. How about our online friends? Anybody with a hand up or burning, burning comment? Okay, we got you on the screen now. Thanks, everybody. Uh, my hand was up. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, uh, good. And thanks everybody for uh, you know doing the work to get this thing this far and to hold uh, a meeting so we can all talk about it. I uh, just want to um, sort of second the comments made by uh, Tim Flynn and Brad Watson. Uh, I am a heavy user of uh, Hubbard Park, both on foot and on bike. Um, and uh, I'm one of many, I think, that uh, used to ride there uh, all over the park before things got sorted out. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it, we found a nice balance with uh, reducing use, moving some of the use to uh, North Branch and having a, a mix of trails that are multipurpose and some that are aimed at particular users. Um, but I think this is a, 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 good, a good idea to do this. And uh, especially if you consider the, uh, the connectivity from the, the whole um, Terrace Street neighborhood, that whole side of town, 
that could now ride their bike on Clay Streets to into Hubbard and then ride them on trails to get all the way to uh, North Branch. That's a, that's a big win for everybody. Reduces traffic downtown. Um, and uh, I'm all for it and I'll be very happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll just ping pong with the, with the room here if anybody in person wants to chime in. Let's talk Dayton's hand go up. Sure. Uh, my name is Dayton Kreitz. Uh, I'm a monthly resident since 2019, and I felt like all my good work in the past was rewarded when I got here and found all the trails to explore. Um, I'm currently serving as the president of Mamba, and um, just want to speak support for this trail on a couple points, uh, or for the project, because I think a lot of the trail exists. Um, supportive of all the connectivity that's been mentioned by the room, I want to point out that the 2022 Parks Management Plan expresses some desire to look into this process and explore it further, so I, I appreciate the commission going through that um, and having a nice conversation. Connectivity between the parks, I think really, connectivity between neighborhoods and parks directly supports Montpelier's goals for attracting people here, for retaining people here, for living in this community, and putting behind some sort of perspective like, oh, well, this is just a disaster community. It floods, we won't go here. This is our outdoor adventure home, right? And this is a great way to encourage that. Um, so everyone's spoken a lot to that. And the only other thing I'd like to say that I'm relative, you know, it's like I said, I've, I'm new here compared to most. Um, but in my experience with Mamba and working through the projects and working with Alec, I also want to recognize that we are very much in support of this being a multi-use trail, meaning that when my, my wife goes to run it, it's a great trail to run. When my friends go to ski it, it's a great trail to ski. When we go to bike it, it's a great trail to bike. And I want to fully admit that we, we're aware in Mamba that when, when North Branch was built, the assessment was for multi-use. And what got built out there is highly developed for mountain biking. And I yes. would be lying if I wasn't saying I enjoy it, but that wasn't the intention, and that I think is a mistake that will not be repeated from, from what we've learned. So just want to put that out there and say, I think a multi-use trail connecting our parks is a wonderful idea, and thank you, Alec, for bringing it this far. Thanks, Dave, for that comment, and uh, it reminds me of another <clears throat> goal action in our plan, which is you know multi-use trails will not favor one use over the other. So that is exactly where we're thinking for this one. And uh, yeah, appreciate appreciate those remarks. So there was a hand up behind Dayton. Yeah, uh, Drew McCondo. I am. I live on the west side of town, off of Terrace Street. I'm a dad. Uh, we have, have two kids. So, speaking a little bit more as a father, I'm not a real mountain biker. I just bought a mountain bike. I'd like to do it more. <laughs> Um, but my oldest son is getting into mountain biking, he's getting into skiing, and we moved here really to, so that they could have that opportunity to get outside in nature. Uh, one of the folks, I don't know, the gentleman over here um, mentioned uh, what a gem we have in the, the parks here. I mean, that's, that's a big, that was a big selling point for my family coming here was having uh, the parks. But I will say living on the west side of town, and, and I, I think this probably applies to other folks too, being able to access all the components can be a challenge. Um, and, and certainly the idea, I'm going to echo some things I've, that folks have already said, but I think my kids having, and their neighbors and their friends, having the ability to safely access these different parts of the park is pretty critical to really taking advantage of a natural asset. And I understand folks wanting to be smart about how the town spends its money. Um, I am too. Uh, I think we need to really take advantage of this asset. I think it'll pay off big time, and, and I really appreciate the, the work that's already gone into to planning it and, uh, and already thinking about how, we're, how to get it done in a way that just makes sense and um, doesn't, you know, doesn't hurt the budget is uh, sensible. So I would just you know, weigh in in favor and really encourage uh, ongoing planning. And this is my first commission meeting, so thanks for the chance to say something. Thanks for coming. All right, any, anything in the chat? Joseph. Okay, we'll take Joseph and we'll go to Emily in the chat. Joseph, go ahead. All right. You can hear me all right? Yes. Great. Well, uh, I just want to echo my support of, uh, of the trail. I'm very excited about it. And I, uh, one thing that just makes me particularly excited about it is just, I should say I'm over here on the terrace side of town and imagining my kids being able to bike themselves to the pool is just a really cool thing going through the woods to be able to do that instead of saying okay go ahead 
go downtown and up Elm Street. It just seems like a crazy proposition to tell my kids to do that on their own. But they could feasibly uh, bike themselves to the pool on their own. They're uh, 8 and 11. So just want to say that one thing. The other thing was a question. I noticed, Alec, in your proposal that uh, it, it was just talking about connecting seven fireplaces to the to that other part of town, but it didn't talk about connecting uh, my neighborhood over on uh, Clarendon Ave and Dairy Lane uh, to seven fireplaces. So how uh, is that not part of this conversation right now? Should I answer that? Or yeah, you want to answer that? Um, yeah, so in the interest of sort of keeping things simple and taking things in bite-sized chunks, um, this meeting is just about the seven fireplaces to um, you know the pool connection and the management plan also lays out in more certain terms um, what the multi-use trail looks like from Wyndham Drive to um, seven fireplaces so it has a, is a has a route described it has a you know what the trail looks like um, and so that that bit is a lot more developed than this one um, and so we're doing this first for two reasons um, one, well, I guess three reasons. One, I already said, just to keep it simple, so not, it's not too complicated for people to digest. Um, two is that um, you know the change of use uh, for Hubbard Park. Um, you know this this would be a change of a you know a longstanding use, and so it's uh, much different than you know new parcels there where they're you know just establishing new uses. And then three, um, when the design work is done for one or both of these bits of trail, it makes sense to do them together. You know, you wouldn't necessarily want to, to design that bit from Clarendon Ave to Seven Fireplaces without thinking about, well, how's it gonna go from Seven Fireplaces to North Park Drive? Because, you know, the, there's, there could be opportunities with the new parkland to, to make that make sense um, and, and not be, you know, not be disjointed. So those are the three reasons. Um, uh, yeah. And, and there currently is bike access from the top of Hubbard Park Drive right. along the Stone Tower path to seven fireplaces. Correct, yes. So this would just be gotcha. adding the connection down to uh, North Park Drive. Okay, thank you. Next speaker, hand up, I see John Holler. And you're still muted, John. Sorry about that. Um, I'm John Holler on the board of Mamba, uh, also as the former mayor. And as mayor, I just uh, mentioned one of our priorities was to make Montpelier a, a bike friendly community. We can phrase that in sort of grander terms about being a world class bike community, but we were really intentional about wanting our city to be friendly to bikes. I think we've had mixed success on that. I don't know if that's still a goal of the city, but I think we'd all agree that that's a goal that we that would be a that would be a positive thing for our city to uh to be able to say that we're a bike friendly community we've got a long way to go there and i think it uh, one of the challenges that often that means making difficult trade-offs um uh, because it's a million choices that you have to make this is one i think that would help advance that goal of making our community more bike friendly but which i don't think uh does involve a lot of choices this is one uh, that doesn't come with a lot of controversy in terms of uh, trade-offs with uh, cars or parking or other things, you know, expenses, costs uh, that get in the way. This is one that I think could advance making our city uh, more bike friendly uh, in a way that doesn't uh, require, you know, a lot of other uh, uh, controversy and trade-offs within the community. Um, the other thing I'd mention is just how incredibly uh, successful the North Park Trail, North Branch Park has been. Uh, uh, Commission may be familiar with that. I'm up there a lot, as I know others are. I spent time up there since the 1990s where I could go years without seeing anybody. Uh, now we see dozens of people and people of all ages, from ages four or five up until the 80s. So it's an incredible resource for the community, and I, I, I do want to echo what uh, what Dayton Christ said on behalf of the Mamba board, we would do things differently now. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes in the way that was uh, that was sold to the to the commission, frankly, and how it was developed. 
Uh, but recognizing that, um, I think we also have to acknowledge what an incredible asset that is for the community. And I think if this project provides us with the opportunity to build on that by providing easy access for uh, people who live on the other side of town on the Terra Street side, as well as other people in the community for whatever reason who are going through the park uh, to be able to come down uh, and access the North Branch Park. Making more of our community a more bike friendly, I think, benefits all of us. And so I really would encourage you to support this plan and appreciate the work that Alec and, and his team have, have, have done uh, to bring this to the commission. Thank you. Thank you, John. Folks in the room? Please. I live in Montpelier. I'm on the other side of town for most of you guys um, up by the college. Um, I'd, I'd like a little bit more clarification of what you mean by bike friendly. Um, uh, Mamba to me means crashing through the woods on your mountain bike. And, you know, I'm 81 years old. I ride my e bike around town. But uh, I, I've walked up these trails, North Branch. And I wouldn't take my bike up there. I mean, berms and jumps, and I, I'm not going to take that up at this time of my life. But um, I, I get a little tired of the routes that I can take, besides my little commutes downtown. Um, going out Route 12 in either direction is harrowing. I wouldn't want my five-year-old doing it now. I don't, I don't want to see one year old doing it. Um, route two, similarly, um, out to Three Mile Bridge, okay, I can go out the bike path, but that gets boring. That's not what I want to do every day. And I'd love to be able to go all the way across town. Are, are you envisioning these trails as being something that I can do, or is it just for the mama guys? Thank you for that question, yeah. Sue. We're all looking at Alec. Alec had a great no, presentation. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I think we're here to listen tonight, but I was going to point to Alec's presentation for some of those details. So if you want to maybe respond to Sue's comment. Yeah, yeah. Good. Happy to respond. That's a good question. Um, I think um, I, w I wish I had on my fingertips some of the average percent grades of those trails in the North Branch Park. But my sense is that um, to get you know to get up into the park, those hillside trails that you're talking about that you wouldn't want to take your bike on, <laughs> they're probably 10% or more until you get up the hill when you can sort of go across the hill. Um, so it is, I think that. Well, I can go up Reservoir Hill. Yeah. So what percent? What? Uh, I don't. What's I don't know that? what reservoir. Oh, the, oh, going out Route 12 up yeah, that. Um, yeah, that's probably six. that's probably six. Yeah, um, it's a state highway, so I don't think they can't make right. it too steep. Um, but I think, you know, you're going to want you're going to be on a dirt trail, not on a pavement. So you're going to want lower, like you know, you're going to you're going to want lower uh, grades to make it easy for, you know, someone like you that's looking for an easy route. And then, uh, you know, also, as it states in the management plan, it's pretty clear, low, easy for kids, zero to five percent. Um, I mean, I. The, the commission wrote that, not me, so. Um, I, yeah, transportation yeah. and connectivity was sort of the outcome of this idea, and not so not much. Not and jumps and. You, you, said it, you said it as best as I could. <laughs> yeah, we were thinking about getting from A to B, and uh, um, you know, some of the other comments that were mentioned tonight about safety and access for children as well, and being able to um, avoid Elm Street traffic, so we'd want something to be feel safer and more inviting than that. Okay, what else are people thinking about? Online, Dave's hand is back up. Go for it. So, um, before going back to before the same we go back to Dave. person, I think, um, was there, did Emily have a... I heard you say earlier we're going to go to oh, Emily yeah, yeah. in the chat. I did, yep. I and then it. I saw Carolyn with her hand raised also, I okay. think. Okay, thank you. Yep, I'll, I will just uh, read out Emily's comment. Thanks for reminding me. Or she's on if she wants to unmute. Okay, so Emily really appreciates... Emily, do you want to read your comment? <laughs> 
Um, sure, I'm happy to. I just appreciated um, the Mondo President's comment about building a truly multi-use trail rather than repeating like, what you characterized as a the mistake of um, how highly bike-centric the North Branch Park um, ended up being built out. Um, spent a lot of time in that part of town, obviously, working at North Branch. At the Nature Center, we have a lot of programs happening on all the trails in the area um, beyond our property as well. And it's um, I, I would like to not see um, too much more high-speed um, bike traffic and berming and all of that. Um, I think it's great that we have it uh, for those who want it. And I think it's important to not um, not keep going in that direction on the other side of um, of the road. And in general, I'm supportive of the project. So thanks for all your work. Yeah, sorry. I, did, I, I was driving around town this afternoon a ridiculous amount and I was like, I am not going back out on the roads. I'm I'm dialing in tonight, but I'm glad you're there. Okay, Carolyn. Um, Carolyn Grudinski, and I was on the Parks Commission, and I'm in support of biking throughout the community and transportation as a way to get around. My concern about the location, and I might be a little confused, but I walk that trail all the time to connect Hubbard Park to... Um, uh, to go into the North Branch, and it's it seems to me it's a pretty good sized wetland, and there's a bunch of boardwalk in there. And I, my concern would be it's kind of tight to accommodate walkers, and it seems like going through that kind of wetland, that area right at the bottom before you get into the, onto the North Branch Drive, it, is it actually following the exact same trail that exists right now and just being made more bike friendly? Or is it going to develop uh, an entirely different trail? I, I just don't see that section being very accessible uh, multi-use. Yeah, so um, that would be kind of in the trail design phase, I think. Um, I don't know if you saw my slide, Carolyn, about sort of where we're at in the process, but the the trail design would work work out those kind of details. Like, you know, for example, the Parks Commission could say tonight, um, we really want this project and we're just gonna open the Parks Connector Trail effective immediately to bikes. Like that's obviously not gonna happen, but that's an example of like one route that could go. Another route could be, you know, we, we want connectivity between those two points. We wanna completely scratch out the Parks Connector Trail and rebuild the entire thing from scratch. Um, that would be sort of on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, I imagine, you know, if the project goes forward, it would likely be some sort of hybrid utilizing good parts of the trail, relocating other parts of the trail that are not so good. And the part you're referencing um, between, you know, basically the bottom of the hill on the Parks Connector Trail and North Park Drive is definitely a wetland. There's a boardwalk going through there. Um, as far as, you know, what we would have to do to accommodate multi-use traffic um, along that route, that would be definitely something that we would want to look at in the design phase as far as like, you know, do we want to widen the boardwalk? Do we want to lengthen it? Um, kind of figuring out those specific details, but we don't want to dive in at that level of detail until, you know, we're sure that we want to move forward with the project. Or even um, changing the grade for the bikes, but people can continue to go down the steeper trail. It's just a really nice, quiet kind of refuge and to have people flying by in bikes changes the experience for the hiker. So it'd be nice to be able to accommodate both. And I just want to put in a pitch. Personally, I feel that, you know, the effort, and this is along the line of what John Holler was saying, should just be to make our whole city as bike friendly as we can. I think it's great to mountain biking, you know, but I, I think the whole city can be looking, and this is not a parks thing. It's just, I'm giving my little blurb, I guess. Thanks, Karen. Um, okay, so let's hear from Paul and then John. I see your two hands are up and then we'll go back into the room. So Paul, please. please. Hey, this is Paul Curtin. Um, I live over on Greenfield, so I'm on the terrace side of park. And first thing I want to say is I just am so grateful for all the work that's been done up to this point to to make the city more bike friendly. Of course, there's always more that can be done, but kind of work has been done and I'm just very appreciative of that. 
Um, I, I can also say in the last 12 months, I've biked, snowshoed, skied, hiked, and, you know, and generally just been spent a lot of time in Hubbard Park. So it's not for me, it's not just about biking, but that in general, having that trail be like a little bit more um, user friendly seems like a real just like a just a um, huge opportunity. So overall, I, I would love to be able to ride my bike from where I am. Cut out there, Paul. Okay, maybe we'll give you a second to get the mic on your end figured out, and we'll pass it to John to keep it coming, and then we'll we'll go back to you, Paul. John Copans. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm just going to echo what others have said, which is I think the connectivity. Uh, to allow biking through this section of the park in the summertime, particularly for those vulnerable cyclists uh, where going through town is just a gauntlet. It's not, we don't really have a safe way for kids or less confident other cyclists to bike through downtown. And the idea that they could do that through the park is really appealing to me in a four seasons way. So I just wanna say, I really support the effort to create that pathway. I, I understand there's probably some concerns about a broadening of cycling further in, uh, in Hubbard Park, but to me, creating a pathway really has value for us to be able to access all the resources that are over at the rec fields and at North Branch Nature Center. So just wanna weigh in with that. Thanks. Thank you. Paul, do you wanna try again to finish your comment? I can see. Yeah, you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry. Did I? I wasn't sure if did I did it pick up at all or did it just cut out? Uh, you just cut out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm so hopefully I'm not repeating anything. But I mean, first I just wanted to say. First, what's that? First. You heard the first part. Okay. Um, so then, I mean, just in general, like I was saying, I've I've basically done. You know, I I bike, hike, snowshoe, ski in the park, and in general, I'm um, just appreciative of the work that's being done and I think it would be really great to have that um, that trail you know oriented more towards multi-use and have it be um, oriented so that people can ride bikes across because it's just a it's just a really um, you know it's just a, it's just a really it would be a really nice feature to have for this town so people can make that traverse back and forth across without having to go through town. Uh, can I just ask really quick, is one of you monitoring? I just realized there's two pages, so if somebody like raised their hand over here, we wouldn't see them up on the screen. Okay. Eric, do you want a chance to speak? Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, I guess I'm, you know, I pretty much uh, didn't I, I feel uh, in accord with uh, a lot of the voices who uh, um, are prioritizing a, a safe way for uh, people and especially kids to get across from the Terrace Street neighborhood to uh, over to the, the swimming pool and the North Bar uh, the North uh, Branch Trails and uh, the rec field. And uh, yeah, I hope we can find a way to do that that... Uh, and uh you know hopefully leaving other trails in place to where people there certainly are a lot of people that walk out there there are a lot of dogs and uh you know it, it seems like we should be able to find a solution that's mindful of those and uh, respectful of everybody's uses uh but letting people bike through <laughs> basically i i think it is sort of ridiculous for people to have to drive all the way around from Terrace Street, uh, you know, when they could cut through a, as the crow flies, more or less, and get down to the swimming pool. So that's my two cents. Thanks, Eric. How about anybody in in the room here? Maybe hasn't spoken yet, but would like to. Well, I'll, I'll add. I'm uh, Chuck Eldred. I live on Home Street. So, anybody else? Um, 
you know, I have children. I feel like this was discussed a decade, 15 years ago, you know, for a similar reason. I, I raised a family out here on Elm Street, and for them to be able to connect with their friends on the upper, you know, Terra Street side and the whole <coughs> kids coming to the pool, I felt like at some point we did open that to biking, but, you know, maybe it never happened or whatever, but regardless of whether it did or not, I think, you know, we're coming full circle to there should be connectivity, obviously. Um, it's just, you know, it really comes down to that first fall line pitch after the wet area that I think that just needs to be, and, you know, from a skier's point, you know, I'm not just talking biking, but I don't go ski in the park because of, I don't mind going up it so much, but coming down under those hemlocks, it's generally a sheet of ice and you're taking your life into your own hands there, you know, most of the time. So, um, yeah, I just think, you know, if we could figure out a way to reduce that grade, like Alex said, and, you know, I, I know his numbers were, you know, based off a full build on 0.82 to get that grade down, but, you know, I, I think everybody realizes we probably aren't looking at, at having to build the full 0.82 miles, you know what I mean? So, so if oh, people, no. or, <laughs> exactly, or not. but for people that look at that number, the per foot and how many feet, I, I really don't think it's, you know, we're talking about the full 0.82 miles for sure. But anyway. <clears throat> Yeah, if I could just, just weigh in for those who missed uh, that and jumped on. We talked about the, just what the cost would be. And, uh, you know, the, the current trail is 0 0.41 miles, 10% grade average. Um, if we wanted to make a 5% grade, we would have to double that to 0.82 miles. Um, and a full rebuild, I gave the number just just for perspective, um, I, I'm not saying we would do this, but if you were to do a full rebuild at, a, at about a cost of $6 per foot, professional trail building company, two excavators, you know, uh, that would be $26,000. So that's one end of the spectrum. Uh, yes, and, and, and also, yeah, whatever we do uh, would, be, would be covered by grant, grant funding. Thanks, Kasha. Um, my daughter's been riding here at North Branch since she was four. And what I love the most about this plan is it opens up the opportunity for her to ride herself to soccer, to ride to the pool with her friends, to ride her mountain bike when she wants to, go to the North Branch. It makes this community even more accessible to her than it already is. And I think that creates a sense of vitality in our community that we desperately need at this time. It's not that we don't have a wonderful place to live, but it just makes it that much greater for kids to be here, for kids to want to come back, for parents to be able to trust that their kids can get where they're going safely without worrying about Elm Street or downtown or whatever intersection it is. So I see this particular piece of trail in my instance, is opening up things, but I think all, for the Terrace Street neighborhoods as well, this is just a huge leap in terms of making things more open for folks who live here, and I'd really love to see it get built. Thanks, Arthur. Looks like Chloe Wexler has their hand up. Yes, can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I actually sent in an email expressing my um, support for this as well, but there's been such great comments tonight. I just wanted to reiterate them and, um, you know, verbally express my support as well. Um, so just, you know, at this point, I just like not even seconding or thirding, you know, however number of many people have spoke up, but just um, the connectivity and the safety for, for the people on that side of town. I I commute through downtown Montpelier pretty much daily on my bicycle. And the number of times that I almost get inadvertently doored by somebody opening their car door is like a disgusting amount. <laughs> um, I wish it wasn't so, but it, it happens all the time. And um, so I just really support there being a way for, for folks to get around the downtown. Um, I also just wanted to sort of like express how wonderful I think it is, all of the kids that I see in the North Branch Nature Center Park and at the Rec Center. You know, I don't have kids of my own, but when I do ride my mountain bike, I, I am a mountain biker as well. And when I do use those trails, 
and I see like groups of, you know, like eight, like eight to 10 year old girls out there by themselves, or even younger than that, I, I get a, such a kick out of it. Um, and so I would really love to, to make that more accessible. Um, and then my final sort of point that I wanted to, to bring up here is that I totally understand um, that that is a really like sort of to Carolyn's point that that is a really lovely part of the park and and it is a little bit farther out and so I do know that a lot of folks including myself go there for like some more sort of like park solitude if you will um but there's a lot of trails in that area and you like that are not the parks connector trail you can take the deer yard trail you can take the streamside trail you can take the creekside trail and and get that same forest and that same environment um and you don't even have to use the multi-use trail if you don't want to so um i just wanted to throw that out there that you know this isn't the only trail in that part of the park um so if if folks are not interested in being on a multi-use trail they could make that same connection without going on the multi-use trail and um and then those that are interested in using the multi-use trail it it opens up a whole world of possibility for and access to a bunch of new folks to hubbard park so thank you very much thank you chloe okay jen roberts jen Jim. Jen, Jim, who's in chat? Jim. All right. Oh, Surprise, you got me. Wait a second. It's uh, Kip Roberts, Jen here as well. We live up on uh, Terra Street, and I would say, you know, I use that that trail. I ride up Hubbard Park Drive, um, probably a couple times a week. That's not an easy um, connection, so that's a different topic than what we're discussing tonight. But uh, you know, talking about that Clarendon connectivity. I think that's really important for more people to actually be able to uh, access Hubbard Park and then access over into uh, North Park, uh, North Branch Park. But uh, I ride that trail quite a bit in the winter down to uh, North Park Drive. And yeah, it's it's not sustainable as it is right now. It wouldn't be great as it is uh, for summertime use. And I think that's why this project is, is important to actually make it to, to Susan's point um, you know, I think this would be great to actually have it be something that's that offers connectivity to a, a wide wide range of users, not just cyclists, but to skiers like Chuck was saying, uh, like Drew was saying, you know, our neighborhood up here in Park West on Terra Street, we've had a lot of new families moving into this neighborhood. And uh, honestly, you know, on a on a daily basis, I break the law by uh uh, taking a left on Baldwin after I come down Terrace, and then I ride in front of the State House. I'm not supposed to uh, uh, to do that on that one way section there. But otherwise, you know, what am I doing? There's, you know, paint is not infrastructure, and we have very poor cycling infrastructure in this town currently. So right now, if I want to go to work or if I want to go over to North Branch Park, I cut in front of the State House. I go along Court Street, which people use as a commuter. Uh, a shortcut speeding on that on that street and and like john was talking about and and arthur and others you know getting doored um and having people aggressively pass you on on a daily basis um you know i got splashed the other day when i was putting some of our loner snowshoes out there at at, uh, at north branch park uh by cars you know driving too fast past me on route 12 there we have uh, uh you know some paint we have some striping we have a bike lane but you know, realistically, there's there's roofers, construction workers, uh, 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 postal folks that are parked in that lane every single day, and you know, I work with uh, Main Street Middle School kids, and you know, there's a bunch of new uh, kids in, interested in cycling, and just having that option of on street uh, riding, like I, I've seen it with those middle school kids, it's it's scary what happens there on 12. So to have some more off-street connectivity options for cyclists and for walkers. Uh, I think that's hugely important for our community. And, you know, it's, let, let's be honest, mountain biking is a great economic driver. It's great for communities. It, it gets new families. It gets people uh, uh, moving to town. So, you know, the cycling that we have in, in North Park, uh, North Branch Park, 
it's great. It's a good thing, actually. And it's it's actually engaging a lot of uh, uh, youthful new riders and families moving to town. Thanks, Kip. All right. Who, who would like a, a chance to speak? Anything in the chat we, we should read out? Any ideas not? I have a question spoken? unrelated to comments. I think you can speak. This is part of commission comments, <laughs> um, which is for Alec, and, I, and it's going back to the finances. Um, and so this, maybe this is a little bit of a softball question for yeah. you, <laughs> but um, can you talk about the recent success you've had in the past couple of years with trails, um, you know, getting, securing funds for trails and things like that? Because uh, I know, as you said, um, there is a great deal of concern about about how this would be for the state of the town. I also think while you're yeah. at that, speaking towards trail maintenance, because there were some concerns in Front Porch Forum as well as about how, what, would, what it would cost to maintain yeah. this trail. So. Yeah, OK. So uh, what are recent successes, and what would it cost to maintain the trail? Um, well, yeah, recent successes, I mean, going back to the NBTI project, uh, North Branch Trail Initiative, uh, I don't think any of that, I don't think a single dime of taxpayer money was spent on that. Although, can anyone from Mamba verify that? We had no municipal funds. There were no municipal funds spent on that project, so that was grant funding and, and individual fundraising. Uh, so all the trails that people ride in the North Branch Park um, was successful fundraising. You know, mostly from Mamba. You know, I had nothing to do with that. Um, but uh, universally accessible trail, you know, think about the other end as far as uh, building a trail for people that um, are not as, uh, you know, not as active on bicycles. Uh, that was also grant funded through recreational trails program. Um, both of our recent park expansions have been funded through um, entirely through grants and fundraising. Um, we have this Montpelier Youth Conservation Corps that has done a ton of maintenance in our parks, rebuilding bridges, redoing trails, um, you know, fixing things that need desperate maintenance. Uh, most of that, you know, in the last four years, that you know, I don't know the exact number, but I'm just going to ballpark four hundred thousand dollars for that program. Um, about three hundred fifty thousand of that has been funded, um, not by not by city funds. Um, so, we've been very successful. Um, and I think you know this money that is already in hand uh, through Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative, there that grant is focused on um, growing the outdoor recreation economy in Montpelier, and so multi-use trails are a key part of that uh, in their eyes. And so this trail, you know, whatever we just you know construction design permitting all of those would be eligible costs for that money that we already have in hand um so it it would be uh something that we could you know move on which which is great it's great to be in that position um you never want to just build something because you have the money but if you want something and you have the money then you're in the best possible place um and then as far as maintenance goes um you know, our, our crew is, is very focused on safety. Um, you know, we, safety is our highest priority. We're the parks and trees department, so a lot of people don't realize we also do all the tree work for the city um, along the roads, in parks, um, downtown, and, you know, the, there's just four of us. So we're a pretty small crew. We have a very huge um, portfolio of things uh, that we take care of. Uh, and. So the way that we do that is, you know, for one thing, we prioritize safety. For another one, we are historically great at leveraging um, other other funds, like I just discussed, but um, other volunteers. Um, on the volunteer point, you know, I'll point to a couple things. One, um, Mamba has been a great partner uh, with the North Branch Trails Initiative. I think that's a good example of a successful partnership where they they put in, you know, a lot of a lot of volunteer hours. They have evening work days, they have weekend work days, uh, they have experienced trail crew leaders. Uh, if you go out there in the winter, if you went out there today um, onto the, the trails in the North Branch Park, uh, every single trail that's groomed on that hillside was groomed by a volunteer uh, groomer, uh, maybe somebody that's in this room, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, uh, they, they put in a ton of volunteer hours. Another example of leveraging volunteer hours is um, 
we we often will host a like an NCCC AmeriCorps crew. Um, so that's like can be m multiple weeks, anywhere from two to six or seven weeks of a full crew of eight to ten people um, that is uh, you know at our disposal to do high priority projects. So um, maintenance is really um, important for us and keeping things uh, safe and well maintained. And when we did our park survey uh, a few years ago, we did a big park survey. It was like uh, you know. I think we got 1,300 responses. We had multiple mailings to every household. It was a good. It was a good survey. We got a good, robust participation. And one of the questions we asked people was, if you were in charge of spending money and prioritizing how the parks spent money, what would, you know, what would be your priorities? And we gave people a big list. And um, maintenance was number four. It was at you know some somewhere around 20 something percent of people, and it was behind. Investing in um, investing, you know, protecting land for future generations, investing in upgraded, you know, more trails for walking, biking, skiing, everything, and then investing in upgraded trail amenities like signage and kiosks and stuff. So, um, you know, this project A hits those high priorities, but B, you know, the fact that maintenance was further down, I think, shows that we're doing a pretty good job. I would like to do a better job. You know, I'm not gonna say we're perfect, um, but we have a small crew. We have a, a lot to do, and I think based on you know how we triage things, I think we're at we're at an acceptable level of maintenance. I would love it to be. You know, you could give me 100 people, I could keep them all busy, and our trails would be spotless. You wouldn't find a twig on them, um, but I, I feel like we're in a good place. And I I think because this trail already exists, especially we're not we're not exactly. Um, you know, drastically increasing the miles of trails. In fact, we'd actually maybe decreasing our maintenance um, because, uh, you know, we'd have a more sustainable trail. And I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded, but I just have one more, one more point, which is that I think there's a great example um, from the flood this summer in July um, because uh, our crew was out there on the Monday night when it was pouring rain. We were out there clearing culverts. Uh, we were out for, for many hours doing that. Um, and then we were out the next day surveying damage, taking pictures, trying to, trying to do triage on the trail system. Have been out many times since. And um, the new trails that we built, that not we built, the new trails that were professionally built were almost untouched in that flood. I mean, they weren't untouched, but the amount of damage compared to what was done to the old trails, which were you know, just arose over time from people walking or they were built without sort of professional trail building, um, con the concepts in mind, um, they were destroyed. I mean, completely destroyed from top to bottom. We're talking culverts overwhelmed, trails washed away, rock, you know, rock walls fallen down. Many of those trails are now impassable. But if you go on the trails that were built with sustainability in mind, they're completely usable uh, to today, you know, this summer, weeks after the flood. So I think it's a great testament that this project is proposing to, to upgrade our trail system in a way that's going to be more resilient because we're not going to be seeing less rain. You know, we're not going to be seeing less um, impact on our trails. We're only going to be seeing more. Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> Thanks for all that, Alice. I think we all benefit from the work you all do and really appreciate the adaptability from the summer and helping out other departments. It's been super impressive, so kudos to the parks department. I just can tag on to what Alex said too. Is MAMA does have designated funds to for maintenance on North Branch. So if we need some money to uh, hire an excavator to, to redo some culverts, including on some of the trails that that pre-exist in the North Branch initiative, that um, certainly can be entertained. There's money there. Great to know. All right, folks, are there any other ideas or speakers out there who feel like they haven't been heard yet and want to speak? And we have Zach coming to the front of the room. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I um, <clears throat> appreciate the conversation this evening. And um, my name is Zach Porter. I live on North Park Drive. And uh, I am. I guess wanting to make sure, I, I've joined the conversation a little bit late this evening, so I don't know um, what was shared before I arrived, um, about maybe 6.30, 6.45-ish. But I want to just touch on a few things that I hope will be considered by the Parks Commission. 
um, connecting, you know, uh, the Terra Street area to uh, the uh, North Branch Park side of Montpelier is a absolutely worthy goal. Um, this town is terribly bike unfriendly. And something that I worry about a little bit is how much energy has gone into um, making Montpelier a great place to ride in the hills around town while our cityscape has suffered for lack of attention. Um, there are a lot of kids and adults, as has been discussed here, who uh, deal with just the, the danger and the frustrations of, of riding on our city streets each and every day. Um, my daughter commuting to elementary school or middle school someday worries me along Elm Street. And I would only have her ride on the sidewalk if I could really you know, uh, have a say in it. Um, and it, you know, it is a very sad reflection on Montpelier that we have not paid more attention to our streetscape. Um, not to mention the fact that you can't even find a bike rack in town um, most of the time. So as, as a bike rider myself, I completely appreciate the, uh, the, the, the problems with um, the deprioritization of, of, of biking, uh, bike commuting, and just bike safety around Montpelier. Um, you know, uh, this particular proposal to connect through Hubbard Park um, also makes sense in many ways. Um, I think what worries me as a, a neighbor to Hubbard Park is somebody who walks in Hubbard Park almost daily to find a place where I can just completely check out from um, my you know, busy life, just as I'm sure many people, all people in this room use our parks to, to do on a daily or regular basis. Uh, I, I worry that the character of Hubbard Park will change um, if we are not really careful about how we go about uh, making these connections happen. I think the connection piece of this is fantastic. That's an outstanding idea. We should, we should you know, absolutely pursue that dream. Um, what I want to be really careful about is, is how we, as a community, and, and how the Parks Commission, how the Parks staff, ensure that it doesn't go beyond that in Hubbard Park. We have an amazing mountain bike resource in North Branch Park. Um, that is not the future of Hubbard Park. It's not the future that's outlined in the management plan for Hubbard Park right now. When the North Branch Park trail system was installed, or when that was talked about by the Parks Commission, my understanding is that the, there was a contrast made, a foil made with Hubbard Park, that we were doing this in North Branch Park because we weren't doing that in Hubbard Park. And I think that's a really smart, reasonable, balanced approach to managing mountain biking as a recreation um, uh, pursuit in this town. So as a connection piece, great. Let's, let's do this the right way. Let's keep it out of the Deer Winter Yard area. Let's keep it south of that main connector trail from Seven Fireplaces, uh, south and east, I guess you could say, of, of that main connector trail from Seven Fireplaces up to North Branch uh, Drive. Um, in a way that uh, avoids that, you know, just sacred hemlock, hemlock ravine that's at the foot of those steep slopes, the land that was acquired back there. That whole ravine should be absolutely off limits, in my opinion, to, uh, to, to bicycle travel. That is a, a really quiet, contemplative, slow part of Hubbard Park where solitude is amazingly easy to find and that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so I want to make sure that there's those kinds of places and many more of them for years to come in Hubbard Park while we also accomplish this very worthy goal, like I've said several times now, of getting you know, adults and kids from one part of town to the other in a safe way. And let's not let this great idea get in the way of getting our streets into a more bikeable shape because um, it is a, it's just a really sad state of affairs out there. So. Um, I, uh, I, I hope that we can thread this needle. I'm not 100% confident that we can do that in a, in, a, in a good way, in a way that makes everybody happy, but I want to believe that we can. And so I hope that this is a slow process of uh, aligning um, all these different goals and finding that right path for this uh, new trail through the park. And so I guess a couple suggestions for the Parks Commission. One is to 
and I, again, I missed the presentation earlier, so I hope that we're not approving an, a, an exact route tonight, if there's anything on the table of that nature. I hope that that's something that we come back to several times before finalizing. And uh, I also, I hope that as a part of approving whatever this trail ends up being, that uh, there is also a statement made, perhaps in the same resolution that the Parks Commission passes to approve this new route. I don't know if it'll take a resolution or not, but I'm assuming it would. That also indicates the commission's desire to see the goal remain connectivity and not a new web of trails through Hubbard Park. So that there's a, there's a kind of two parts to this, that yes, we're gonna do this for the community because it's the right thing to do, it's the really logical thing to do to connect our pieces of our town, but that we aren't going to change the current character of Hubbard Park beyond this uh, point of, of, of connecting our neighborhoods. Um, and I think that that should really be a piece of the same, the same statement, the same resolution. It's two sides of, of, of I will not even want to call them sides. I think they're really complementary. Um, and so I hope that that would be considered by the commission as you're thinking about um, how, to, how to move this forward. And I hope that also makes it easier for the community as a whole, for people who are concerned about this um, uh, for one reason or another. So anyways, thank you for the chance to, to weigh in. Thanks, Zach. Delicate balance, multiple uses. Thank you. Are we doing seven twenty-three? We got a few mm. more moments. We just have one person in the chat who just uh, reiterated what you were saying, Zach. Saying uh, Mark Laxer said what Zach is saying makes sense to me. A balanced approach. So. People appreciate what you said. And I also think you'll find that <clears throat> our management plan for Hubbard Park speaks to a lot of those points. And this commission certainly agrees with your hopes for Hubbard Park. <laughs> this has been a fantastic turnout. Uh, I don't think we've had a Parks Commission meeting yeah. of this size. 30. When's the last time we had 30 people attend a meeting? <laughs> it, Maybe never. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm not going to say. But I, um, yeah, so I just want to say thank you, everybody, for venturing across town. We've, we've heard you. Uh, we've made personal notes. We have formal meeting minutes. Uh, we will be reviewing the comments that were submitted ahead of time uh, uh, via email for folks who weren't able to make it. And taking everything into consideration, we'll be taking this subject back up at our February meeting. All of our meetings are public. You're welcome to join any of those third Tuesday of the month, typically. And it, we'll always post those agendas um, a few days to a week ahead of time on the city's website. So thank you so much. If you don't know how to get in touch with us, uh, you can get our contact information before you leave. But it's also posted to the park's website. If you're here in person, please leave your email and your name on our sign-in sheet. Um, we look forward to planning with you all in the future. This was super informative, and I really enjoy this part of being a Parks Commissioner, where we can get out from behind the Zoom screen and get the community excited about our great parks and how we're going to move through them and uh, the future of our town. So, amen. amen. <laughs> Is there anything else, Commissioners? For for we uh, think that's it. Adjourned by unanimous consent. Okay, so we're adjourned. Seven twenty-five.